Welcome, everybody. Um, so today, um, we're really excited to, um, to have um, Maddie Walker. So Dr. Maddie Walker, um, and she's going to be talking about Chinese medicine for PCOS. Um, so yeah, so Maddie's really going to talk about the treatment and management of PCOS from a Chinese medicine perspective, and the benefits of using this treatment modality for PCOS. So um, yeah, so if you've got any questions at all, um, please feel free um, to just leave a question just in the chat section. So I'll be monitoring um, these as they come through. Um, ideally, we'd like to just leave all of our questions until the end, just to so that Maddie can go through her presentation. Um, so yeah, but any questions that you know pop up for you during the presentation, just pop them in, and I'll, I'll be monitoring them um, throughout. So um, yeah, so it's over to you now, Maddie. Awesome, thank you. So hey, everyone. Um, I'm Maddie. So I'm an acupuncturist. Um, doctor of Chinese medicine. Um, I've been out of union practicing um, for three years now. And um, my main focus and interest is women's health and fertility. So um, I'm really excited to do this presentation today and hopefully give you guys a bit of an insight in Chinese medicine and how we treat PCOS. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my PowerPoint up to share with you guys. And see. There we go. Hopefully that's all good. Yeah, we can see that. Thanks, Manny. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So um, first of all, I'm just going to go into um, what we'll be covering today. So we'll be talking about uh, what is PCOS, its symptoms, causes and body mechanisms, um, the effects of PCOS on women, um, and diagnosis. So we're going to be talking a bit about the Western medicine side, and then I'm going to be going into traditional Chinese medicine, so TCM um, side of things, um, and looking at it from a different point of view. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start with um, what PCR stands for. So it actually stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So in Western medicine, poly means many, so in this case, it refers to many cysts on the ovaries. However, from a more holistic point of view, this syndrome is understood as a group of symptoms that relate to high levels of androgens, which are, are male hormones and um, lack of ovulation. So you don't need to have polycystic ovaries to have polycystic ovarian syndrome, even though it is in the name, which can be quite confusing. Um, and it was put forward to actually change the name, but um, that hasn't happened yet. Um, so essentially PCOS is an issue with ovulation, which causes excessive produc production of um, male hormones. Um, it affects up to 10% of women of reproductive age, and it's one of the most common causes of um, an ovulatory infertility in Australia. So just having a look at um, explaining what polycystic ovaries is. So this can still occur in PCOS, but they are not specific to PCOS. So there's a bit of a lack of understanding of what the cysts are that occur on the ovaries. So the word cyst is actually referring to the growing ovarian follicle that occurs every time you ovulate. With polycystic ovaries, you may not ovulate correctly and the follicles in your ovaries are prevented from growing and maturing into eggs. So this causes the immature follicles to accumulate in the ovaries, um, which builds up. So um, you can see there in the picture that the normal ovary at the top, it shows the follicle maturing and releasing the egg. And at the bottom picture, um, we have immature follicles that haven't been able to release an egg um, in PCOS. So having a look at the signs and symptoms that occur with PCOS, we have um, the big one, which is infrequent periods or no periods, um, which also means um, infrequent ovulation or no ovulation, um, increased body hair, acne, polycystic ovaries, headache, weight gain, um, excess androgen, insulin resistance, and then we can have other things like high blood pressure, poor sleep, anxiety and depression as well, which is 
commonly associated with PCOS. So the cause of PCOS is still unknown, but there are associations with genetics, androgens, so male hormones, um, the maturing process of an ovarian follicle, insulin resistance, obesity, and stress. But, TC, uh, but PCOS does tend to run in families and it is thought to be passed on by the, fa by the father's genes. Um, it's also more likely to occur when there is a family history of type 2 diabetes and there may also be predisposing factors operating in the womb during pregnancy, which is um, very interesting. So let's have a look at how PCOS plays out in the body. So there are two main physiological mechanisms that happen. The first one is insulin resistance, and the second is LH and FSH levels, which are basically um, hormones. So we'll have a look at these a bit more closely. So a woman with PCOS may have insulin resistance, which, which means that the cells within the body fail to respond to the insulin hormone to take up glucose for the use of energy. Um, and because the glucose is not being utilized for energy, it results in the storage of glucose, which causes weight gain. So the excess insulin within the body will cause the body to increase with the production of androgens, which are male hormones. And this increase can lead to a lack of ovulation. So the two main pituitary hormones that orchestrate the major changes in the female body are luteinizing hormone, or known as LH, and follicle stimulating hormone, known as FSH. These hormones are essential for reproduction. LH stimulates the production of androgen substrates, which are converted to create sex hormones, such, such as um, testosterone and estrogen. FSH stimulates the growth of ovarian follicles to allow the maturation of an egg before it is released, so it is important for FSH and LH to be in balance to avoid complications with ovulation. Now, normally during the beginning of a menstrual cycle, FSH is higher than LH. However, with PCOS, this is uh, somewhat reversed. So initially, instead of a high FSH, there is an increased level of LH which produces an excess of androgen substrates that lead to elevated testosterone levels, which are associated with uh, signs and symptoms like excess body and facial hair. So with the decreased levels of FSH in polycystic ovaries, um, ovarian syndrome, the ovaries are not stimulated adequately for maturation and eventually ovulation, which means there's no egg release. So as a result of lack of ovulation, this syndrome can cause fertility difficulties and causes menstrual irregularities. So the absence of ovulation also disrupts the levels of estrogen, FSH, LH, and progesterone, which are the four primary hormones that regulate our menstrual cycle. Now, there are um, a few risk factors that come with PCOS. So women are usually at risk of um, having diabetes, cardiovascular disease, endometrial cancer, risk of miscarriage, gestational diabetes, and high blood pressure. So that's why it's so important that um, you do get diagnosed and that a management plan is in place. Um, if you have been to a specialist, um, they would have diagnosed you most likely using the Rotterdam criteria, which specifies that you need to have two out of the three of uh, these following symptoms to be diagnosed with PCOS. So you need to have um, irregular or no ovulation, um, an increased level of androgens in your blood, and polycystic ovaries on an ultrasound. So for adequate diagnosis of PCOS, other conditions that present very similar need to be tested for and then excluded from the process. So these could be things such as hypothalamic amenorrhea, hyperthyroidism, hyperlactin, and adrenal diseases. 
So there are tests that are conducted to help diagnose PCOS. Um, these include blood tests, which may reveal elevated levels of androgens, such as testosterone and high LH. Then a progesterone test is usually taken uh, seven days before the expected menstrual period, which will help determine whether or not you've ovulated. A blood glucose level um, is taken as well to see if there's any insulin resistance. Viro tests should be conducted to help rule out other conditions that present similar to PCOS, like we spoke about before. And a transvaginal ultrasound should be done to detect whether there are multiple cysts around the edge of the ovaries. And then of course we have um, your physical signs and symptoms. So that might include things like facial and um, body hair increase, acne and alopecia, which is um, hair loss and thinning due to an increase of um, male hormones. So in Western medicine, treatment is usually um, directed towards putting the patient on something such as the oral contraceptive pill or metformin. Um, and there are other anti-androgen drugs as well that I recommended. However, um, I'm not here today to talk about Western medicine. I'm here to talk about um, the approach of treatment through Chinese medicine. So let's have a look at that. So before I go into specifics about um, treating PCOS in clinic, I will explain the way that acupuncturists can view and diagnose this condition. So I know that from many years of trying to explain how Chinese medicine um, use certain conditions, it can seem quite bizarre. But something to keep in mind while I explain this is that it is over a 2,500 year old medicine that has stuck around and been implemented in the Western culture, which um, must mean we're doing something right. <laughs> and another thing to keep in mind is that when Chinese medicine talks about organs, we're not just referring to them through Western medical and anatomical eyes, we also view them from an ancient energetic point of view, where organs are a physical, mental, emotional integrated whole. So as a holistic medicine, we look at the individual's physical, emotional and mental state when we're treating and diagnosing. And in Chinese medicine, we look at treating the body's physiological imbalances by regulating what we call qi. Now, qi can be understood as the body's vital energy that nourishes our organs and regulates systematic pathways, such as the female reproductive system. So blood, bodily fluids, and our mind are all forms of our body's chi, and therefore also needs to be balanced so that our body can function at optimal health. Now in traditional Chinese medicine, we understand the body to have and create different substances as well. So these substances include what we call jing, which is basically referring to our eggs, um, sperm, and our congenital health. We also have something called dan, which is a heavy substance that creates blockages of energy throughout the body and can prohibit the flow of qi and blood to our vital organs. So in Chinese medicine, we base a diagnosis off the patient's signs and symptoms, what their pulse feels like, how their tongue presents, um, and their response to certain palpatory investigations, like um, pressing the belly and seeing where there's pain. Um, so from this, we can get an idea as to what organs and substances are involved in the condition. And with PCOS, we are looking mainly at the organs that influence the functioning of the reproductive endocrine and metabolic systems in the body and what substances can influence them or cause them damage. With PCOS, there are a few organs and substances that are commonly unbalanced in um, Chinese medicine. But for the purpose of today, I will focus solely on one organ that is commonly involved in the diagnosis of PCOS, which is the spleen. So one of the most common diagnosis in Chinese medicine for a patient with PCOS is what we call a spleen damp pattern, 
obstructing the uterus and the ovaries. So let's have a look at the spleen and how this pattern plays out in the body. So the spleen keeps the uterus in place and prevents prolapse. It creates your body's chi and blood, um, which is supplied to the ovaries and uterus for normal functioning. And the spleen is heavily influenced by our diet and it governs the metabolic and endocrine systems of our body. So for example, when our diet consists of lots of oily, fatty, sugary, heavy foods, um, eating at irregular times of the day, under overeating and consuming a protein deficient diet, it can weaken the spleen and lead to the production of the substance damp, which we talked about before. So damp can also be created in the spleen from excessive worry and anxiety, over or under exercising, excessive work hours and prolonged exposure to damp environments as well, such as mold. So in this case, this damp obstructs the flow of chi and blood to the reproductive organs like the ovaries and the uterus, which means they can become malnourished and inhibit their normal functions such as ovulation and menstruation. So this damp substance can sometimes also be stored in the ovaries and uterus, which also inhibits um, their ability to function correctly. So this can cause issues with poor maturation of a follicle um, and delayed or irregular ovulation and menstruation. And the damp substance can also be damaging to the body's gene, which I mentioned before. So it can damage the body's egg quality and health, which as we know, also influences the quality of ovulation and growth of the follicle. Now, the spleen also governs the endocrine and metabolic systems in the body, which I said before. So when the spleen is damaged and impaired by the heavy and slow nature of damp, it is unable to properly function. And this means hormones are not regulated efficiently and the digestive system slows down, causing issues with metabolism and absorption of vital nutrients and hormones such as insulin. So as a result of poorly functioning organs um, and disruptions to the delivery of chi and blood, the body will manifest physical signs and symptoms such as insulin resistance, polycystic ovaries and androgen excess. So patients with this spleen damp diagnosis, they can also experience um, signs and symptoms like nausea, weight gain, um, a feeling of heaviness and bloating, foggy head and poor concentration, which are all some um, signs and symptoms that many PCOS patients experience as well. So that is just one example of how PCOS is viewed and um, diagnosed in Chinese medicine. So in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, we treat the pattern diagnosis and the organs involved, not just the specific Western diagnosis that a patient walks into the room with. So this means that treatment is actually more individualized and personal, and that this is um, where specific acupuncture points are needled and particular herbs are prescribed. So a TCM treatment usually includes acupuncture, Chinese herbs, um, diet, exercise, and emotional advice, and um, supplements as well. So having a look at um, the effectiveness of acupuncture and what it does do, um, as a whole, it's been shown to be effective in the treatment and management of PCOS. So a review of the published medical studies regarding acupuncture's effect on women's reproductive health was completed in 2014. And after analyzing the data, researchers concluded that there is preliminary data indicating that acupuncture can improve menstrual health and protein for women experiencing delays in falling pregnant. Um, and these researchers have reviewed recent studies as well and concluded that acupuncture specifically helps to increase blood flow to the ovaries, which decreases inflammation and helps to regulate ovulation, increases blood flow to the uterus, which improves the chances of an ovum implanting on the uterine wall. It 
resets the nervous system, which helps to reduce anxiety and stress. And this is very important for PCOS because the hormones that are secreted during stressful um, situations, such as cortisol, can, significant, can significantly um, decrease fertility. Acupuncture has also been proven to normalize hormone and endocrine systems that regulate ovulation, especially women with PCOS. It positively affects the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, which is kind of just a fancy way of saying um, how the brain and ovaries speak to each other. And it obviously then helps to um, regulate our menstrual cycle. <clears throat> Now the treatment protocol for patients with PCOS is a minimum of three months of frequent acupuncture sessions because it generally takes three months for the hormonal system to begin to regulate naturally. And then from that, treatment would continue to focus on the individual's underlying causes of PCOS and how long they've had it for and their presenting um, signs and symptoms. So once again, it is very individualized. And alongside acupuncture, herbal remedies are usually prescribed to help regulate hormones and um, naturally induce a healthy ovulation. And um, for the purpose of today, I have just included a few high quality sources that examine the effectiveness of acupuncture in the treatment of PCOS. Um, so the source one showed that acupuncture treatment resulted in higher ovulation frequency in lean and overweight women with PCOS. The second source showed that acupuncture may increase the clinical pregnancy rate and the ongoing pregnancy rate and decrease the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome in women with PCOS undergoing um, IVF or ICSI. And the third source that I included um, shows how acupuncture acts on the area of the brain known to reduce sensitivity to pain and stress, um, as well as promoting relaxation and deactivating the analytical brain, which is responsible for anxiety and worry. So besides acupuncture treatment and prescribed herbs, Chinese medicine offers other more general management options that a patient with PCOS should try and employ that will help no matter their specific diagnosis. So let's look at diet first. Um, in Chinese dietary theory, we recommend that for optimal energy and production, um, we should follow these food guidelines. So trying to avoid sugary, fatty and oily foods, avoiding lots of dairy, and alcohol. So these are all inflammatory foods that we want to try and steer clear of. Um, if you do want to have a drink, try and have more, um, steer more towards a glass of red wine. Um, because in Chinese medicine, it does have some blood building properties. Trying not to um, over or under eat and consume mainly warm and cooked foods such as broths, stews and soups. And one very important aspect um, of Chinese dietary theory is to make sure that you have breakfast. So this meal is commonly skipped, but it is essential to have in the morning um, as it enables the body to create its energy for the day. And in the morning, our stomach and spleen organs and channels are most active. So this means that um, we have the best chance of creating um, the energy that we need for the day. Um, so eating lots of root veggies like carrots and pumpkin and lots of leafy green veggies. So these root um, foods help to detox the body and build blood and chi. And ensuring you're drinking plenty of water every day as well. So in TCM, um, exercise helps to move our chi. It helps to move damp and any other stagnation in our body. And this is why sometimes you feel so good after exercising, even um, when you've been feeling really tired beforehand. So regular movement helps to increase the flow of chi and blood um, to your reproductive organs. It helps to align your uterus in your body, modifies your stress response and reduces cortisol, your stress hormone. Um, it improves your sensitivity to insulin and reduces chronic inflammation. 
and it also helps manage anxiety and depression as well. So Qigong, yoga and Tai Chi are all forms of exercise that um, we usually recommend that help benefit the mind and the body with some slow movements and breath work. And they integrate the idea of building and moving Qi throughout the body as well. Now, looking at what we recommend for mental and emotional support. So a support network is highly necessary for anyone who has a condition that affects their daily life. So be sure to surround yourself with people and colleagues who understand your position and can offer you support and are there for you when you need help. Um, having a team of health practitioners who listen to you and offer you support that you feel works for you is also very essential. And if you are not happy with a practitioner, please seek one that suits you better. You want to feel completely comfortable and supported when you're receiving medical advice. So this team might include a specialist, an acupuncturist, psychologist, nutritionist, naturopath, and um, other disciplines as well. Now, enough sleep is also necessary for our mental and emotional health. In traditional Chinese medicine, sleep is when our shen or our spirit gets to rest. So our Shen controls our emotions, our energy, and our thoughts. And having PCOS can be a very mentally uh, draining condition. So it is essential that people are getting a good eight hour sleep every night, um, try to avoid caffeine after lunchtime, avoid stimulation from screens, and have a bed routine in place that can help you wind down from the day. So your body cells actually regenerate when you sleep, which is essential for cell repair and growth. Meditation also allows our Shen or our spirit to rest and restore. So even if it's just five minutes in bed in the morning or five minutes at night, be sure to try and just let your mind rest. So the theory of yin and yang in Chinese medicine, it just reminds us that everything needs to be in balance. Nothing should be too little or too much. You want a balanced lifestyle. And that's what we try and um, recommend for our patients in Chinese medicine. Now, looking at supplements, um, be sure to see a qualified health professional before prescribing yourself any supplements. But some of the common ones that are used to help women with PCOS are magnesium, which helps relax the nervous system and improves sleep. It improves insulin sensitivity and aids in muscle recovery. Vitamin D improves insulin sensitivity and supports healthy maturation of follicles. Zinc suppresses androgens and nourishes follicles to support ovarian function. And B vitamins help to reduce stress and regulate the HPO access in the body. Now, something I want you guys to remember is that it is definitely possible to regulate your ovulation and menstruation if you have PCOS, and it's definitely possible um, for you to fall pregnant if that's something you're wanting in the future. So that actually just brings us to the end of the presentation today. Um, but if you're interested in trying alternative medicine and acupuncture, you can contact me via email or Instagram or book online. Please don't be afraid to contact me if you have any questions about um, treatment or today's presentation. Um, and I also have a very exciting project coming up. Um, I'm creating a podcast where I discuss women's different health issues, which can help you feel like you're not alone listening to people's stories. Um, and that will be coming out the first week of February. So. If you're interested in listening to that, um, have a look at Flourish and Flow on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and yeah, that brings us to the end today. So if you have any questions to ask me about what you want to know with Chinese medicine and treatment for PCOS, um, you can type in the box now or email me if you need. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like we've got any questions at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think um, 
We'll just give everyone in just a moment. It doesn't look like there's any questions at all. So, um, yeah, so um, I think that that's good. Well, you've shared everybody, you know, you've shared with everybody your contact details, Maddie. So, um, yeah, so Caitlin's just sort of said, made a comment. Um, amazing. This makes so much sense. Very insightful of you looking in with you. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really nice. So, um, yeah, so it's was a really informative presentation. Thank you so much, Maddie. Um, and, um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, I can um, definitely just contact you directly. Yeah. Um, and, um, oh, can we please have the slides provided? So um, how, like, how do you feel about that, Maddie? Would you be happy to share the slides? I mean, this will be in the members area. Yeah. This, um, yeah, so, oh, we do have a question in the Q&A, but um, how do you feel about sharing the slides, Maddie? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> fine? Okay, I think we've got everybody's email addresses um, who attended the presentation. So, um, yeah, so what we can do is, yeah, we can organise to send that send that on. So let's just have a look in the Q&A. Um, okay, so we do have a question here. So what herbs would be prescribed and how would they assist in comparison to acupuncture? Okay, so um, kind of what I said before, it depends on your um, personal um, pattern of diagnosis that we give you. Um, but for PCOS, there are some common ones. So there can be um, something like guapy tongue, which helps to build our body's chi and um, blood. Um, can be something like um, Jiao Yao Fan as well, which helps move stagnation um, and blockages in our body. But it is very specific to, who, to how you present. Um, so I can't really say like this, will, this herb Herbal formula will fix um, your specific presentation with PCOS. So that's why it's important to go um, and see someone that can prescribe something personal for you. But those herbal formulas are common ones that we usually use. Um, and it is really good to use herbs alongside acupuncture because herbs is more of an internal, um, like a quicker internal fix alongside. Um, using acupuncture, which helps to reduce our stress and um, regulate our nervous system. So it's kind of a bit of a internal, external um, combined treatment, which, um, yeah, so that's how we kind of use it in Chinese medicine. Okay, awesome. Um, thanks, Maddie. And we've got one more question here. Yep. Would, would treatment for PCOS be similar to treatment for other conditions such as endometriosis? Yeah, so um, we would use different or some same acupuncture points, some different acupuncture points, but we would usually do things like um, prescribe Chinese herbs, do acupuncture, which helps to regulate the reproductive um, organs in the body. So we focus on a, mainly four different organs for endo and PCOS, and that's um, like our spleen, our liver, our kidneys, and then we have like our ovaries and uterus, which is kind of seen um, as a combined organ in Chinese medicine. Um, so yeah, we'd be doing acupuncture, herbs, um, and then we, you know, put things on like a heat lamp. We can use moxa, which is a herb that we burn, which helps promote blood flow. Um, and with PCOS and endo, um, because um, they do come from an underlying cause of a, a lack of nourishment Treatment can be can be very similar, um, but once again, it depends on um, how you're individually presenting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So individual treatment is key then. Yeah. So Takeaway message there. All right. Awesome. So doesn't look like we've got any more questions here. So um, thank you so much for your time, Maddie. We really really appreciate it. Um, and thank you to everyone who's joined us today.